Hey guys, it's Kelsey and back with another scrapbooking process video and today is scrap five. I actually got to pick the recipe for this month. So I chose um, a punch, paper tearing, metallic, brads, and washi. I kind of wanted a mix of some fun techniques and some products that maybe we forget about a lot. So I know that now it's a lot more common to use like enamel dots or something instead of brads. But most of us, I think, have brads in our stash that get forgotten about. So things like that, as well as punches, I really wanted to inspire people to pull out some older things. <laughs> um, with this collection, I'm really excited because I decided to pull in some scraps I had from a previous How to Kill a Kit with Style. It was one of my more recent ones. It was the Heidi Swap collection. I believe it was called Carefree. I had a lot of ephemera left over, but not really very much paper. So I did go and get the Honey and Spice collection from Heidi Swap, which I love that collection too. And I really feel like the Carefree and the Honey and Spice collection um, go really well together. So I decided to pull out in a couple papers from the Honey and Spice collection and then try to use up some leftovers from my Carefree ephemera. <laughs> so that was my goal on this page. I really love, they have these pictures of this bird at work, one of my coworkers brought in his bird because we had to draw blood on her because he was trying to, um, he, was, he wants to breed her and there was something they had to do with blood work to make sure to match her to the right person, like other bird or something. I don't know exactly how that works. I'm more of a dog and cat and horse person <laughs> versus exotics. Um, my last hospital worked a lot with exotics and birds and reptiles and stuff. Um, and it was fun at first, but they're definitely not as sociable as cats and dogs. So you get injured, uh, like there's a higher risk of injury with them just because, you know, what they are. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of glad now that I work with a hospital that does really only cats and dogs. We do see the occasional like rodent and stuff, but it was fun with this bird. She was so sweet. I'm not really a bird person, but I loved this bird. Her name was Pina. And she was like the most cuddly, sweetest bird ever. <laughs> and so I wanted to document her just because we don't work with birds and we don't see them as often as I used to. Um, I wanted to make sure to get this one documented. And she's so pretty. And I thought her like colors went so well with this collection. So I went straight for like the pink and the green. I thought it complemented her feathers really nicely. I didn't really have an orange or anything that I thought would, would match her. But I think the pink and green together work really nicely. Uh, and I have this one piece. I definitely want to use the green part of this floral, the polka dot section, <clears throat> but I didn't want this floral edge to go to waste. So I thought it would be really cool if I fussy cut the floral and just had it on the side, like it was on the original paper, but going over this pink. And I think the pink and green are looking really nice. So I'm trying to go for this um, two uh, color, color scheme with the pink and the green. <clears throat> I do. <laughs> I'll admit, kind of forget about my recipe at one point. <laughs> at the end, I like finished my page, I took my photos, and then I realized I forgot one of the recipe items, which is embarrassing because I picked them. Um, so you will see where I kind of go back in and, and add the final thing, but I just got so excited playing with these um, new paper pad and you kind of getting expired with this color scheme, which I don't work with a lot, that I kind of just, <laughs> started doing my own thing and forgot. Um, but I did decide to go ahead and start with the torn paper. I love the way torn paper looks. I'm in this phase right now where I feel like I'm tearing paper on everything. And I really wanted an, an extra layer behind this floral. Um, so I think including this green torn section and then popping some of these leaves up on some foams there's some dimension so it doesn't look like it's the same paper even though it originally was i think that looks really cool and i think that adds a lot of interest right away to the side of the page and then i kind of have to do this thing where i make my layers around my photos just as interesting as the side of my page because i kind of feel like that's showing up the page the uh, photos a little bit <laughs> at this point so I'm going in, this pink paper is actually a scrap from the Carefree collection, but it's in my color scheme. So I thought I'd go ahead and try and get it used up. And then there's a cut apart that comes in the Honey and Spice collection that's the same kind of green. It says, these are my favorite days. And I thought that was appropriate because um, my job working in um, 
like daily practice with dogs and cats sometimes it can get repetitive so on days where we have something like this come in it's always really exciting uh, so I, I thought that sentiment was appropriate and again in my color scheme so um, <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm going to use that cut apart and then I'm going to use this pink scrap it was kind of a struggle because these two four by six photos I wanted to overlap them but not cover up um, Pina and then um, I wanted this pink layer to kind of encompass both photos but it wasn't quite large enough so you can kind of see my brain trying to work on how I can stretch this pink scrap to look like it's big enough to encompass all of these photos so I end up trimming it in half and kind of tucking it on either side of my photos and then I'm going to use this green cut apart to fill in the gap at the top so you don't see that there's a gap there and then I'm just going to have to have some layers underneath this um, pink layer to like encompass the lower photo, if that makes sense. Because right now it's not fully matted, which is fun. I think that adds some layering and some interest, <laughs> but I definitely don't want that photo just hanging off the edge onto the background without any layers behind it. So I'll go in and add some more layers down there in a little bit. But this was kind of my compromise and my way to <laughs> use the, the papers I wanted to use to get as close to my idea of how I wanted them layered as possible. And then now I'm going through and trying to figure out what I want to do as far as ephemera. I know I want more paper layers, but I get kind of stuck at this point. So I decide to go and see what I have for embellishment because once I kind of figure out where my embellishment clusters will be, that will kind of tell me where I need to layer more. I'm thinking about using a tag, but the top of that tag is yellow and not green, which I didn't mind because Pina has yellow and green feathers. But I was really in love, and my florals have yellow in them too on the side. So I wouldn't have minded including yellow, but I really was enjoying the color scheme of just using green and pink. So that tag ends up coming off. Um, I do decide to do some more torn details, and I'm creating a little banner at the bottom of this photo with more pink and green layers. So my first cluster is going down. I really wanted to incorporate that polka dot green paper into a few more layers. So I have a banner down there uh, that kind of fills in the space underneath Pina's photo. And then I'm just layering up. I have some tickets and some stickers from and the like vellum floral gold piece because I need to incorporate metallic. <laughs> that was one another one of my recipe items. But all of those are from the Carefree collection. So I'm glad I'm getting these ephemera bits used up from my original How to Kill Kit with Style that didn't get used up the first time. But it's always really satisfying seeing that kind of that stuff get used up um, later on. I definitely don't like when I feel like I forget about the scraps from earlier collections because I don't want anything to go to waste. Um, <clears throat> but while I'm working with that, I since I added the vellum with the gold, I'm like, okay, so gold is the metallic I'm rolling with. I really want some gold in my background as well. So I decided to pull all my layers off. I hadn't glued them down yet, so it wasn't really a big deal. But I decided to do some gold Heidi Swap Color Shine just so there's gold splatter in the background. So any gold I add within my layers, it kind of looks balanced and it makes sense. So I laid that kind of to the side to dry a little bit while I focused on more of these layers. I knew when I picked punch, I was probably gonna use a border punch. And at first I thought I was gonna use a scallop, but because I'm at work, I kind of wanted to go with this notebook edge punch. I love this punch. I use it a lot for my like school layouts just because I feel like a notebook edge is on, pun on, on theme. But for work, I think it works as well. So I decided to do a notebook edge punch instead. And I'm gonna have this green layer running along the top of my layers. And I kind of wanted it again to look like it was a big layer that ran behind everything. So I want some of this paper at the bottom too. <laughs> but I was kind of being stingy and I didn't wanna cut into the big chunk I had left over. So I'm going to try and use a scrap of the torn edge left over from the piece I tore to go underneath the floral on the right side um, on the bottom. And it's not quite long enough, so you'll see I go through my scraps from the Carefree collection and find one more layer I can tear to layer up with the other green polka dot so that it kind of creates the width and the look that I want um, because I'm kind of restricted size-wise with the green piece because I was being stubborn and not wanting to cut a new one. 
Um, so yeah, <laughs> I think I'm going through my sticker sheet now from my Carefree collection to see if there's anything in there I can layer up behind other ephemera bits. I had lots and lots of stickers and ephemera for this collection, which I, I love. It was so fun <laughs> playing with the Carefree collection with the amount of ephemera I had to play with. Um, so I'm glad I have all this left over to roll over into this paper pad because I don't have any ephemera for this uh, Honey and Spice collection. So I'm really glad they coordinate because I can just pull um, these ephemera over to this paper pad and it'll work really well, obviously, as you can see from this layout. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just got kind of an idea of stickers in that sticker sheet. I definitely want to pull some in and have another embellishment cluster on this green cut apart in kind of the empty area above the word favorite. <clears throat> but before I do that, I want to finish out the layers. So um, you can kind of see the torn piece of green that isn't quite long enough to go underneath my photo. So I took this kind of scrap of distressed white with some text on it and decided to do a torn detail with that to run across the bottom and then I can have this green torn piece kind of tucking underneath. And I really like how that looks. It pulls that green pattern down there, but the white piece that I added in kind of fills in the gaps that were there. <laughs> so I think that looks good. Um, and I think my layers are done now. I just need to finish out with my embellishment. So I have my punch, I have my paper tearing, I have my metallic, I still have to do brads and washi. <laughs> And I kind of forget about them for right now. So I'm just going to play around with finishing out. I definitely need another embellishment cluster. I decide to add a couple stickers to this one. Um, this little good vibes piece I popped up on some foam. And that is actually from the Honey and Spice collection. It was on the cut apart sheet with the These Are My Favorite Days piece. So I'm glad I have both of those used up. But everything else I think is from the Carefree collection. So I'm just trying to figure out how I want it layered. Since I did do this gold uh, floral vellum piece, I want another gold foiled vellum piece in my other cluster. So there is a piece that says dreamy, which I think is perfect because I love Pina <laughs> and I think she is dreamy. So I know that's gonna be one of the pieces. I think I'm playing around with doing a cluster in the upper left-hand corner. But once I put this dreamy piece over here, I'm like, yeah, that looks a lot better as an area of embellishment. <laughs> I usually don't have my embellishment clusters floating, though. I really like them tucked in behind my layers. So that's where I go through my sticker sheets and try to find something to anchor it. And so I found this pink circular label and I thought it would be OK with a floating embellishment cluster if it had a label like this or something to sit on. <laughs> So I have a little floating embellishment cluster right there. I think it looks really cute. I did a little sticker that says heart, eyes, and pink. And then I went through the little definition sticker sheet because I wanted a, a green sticker to go with the heart, eyes sticker since I have pink and green stickers in the other cluster too. I'm missing the green element. So I did just pull in the relax and unwind. And I think that looks super cute. <laughs> so that cluster's down. Now I'm like, okay, I need some washi. So I found some gold washi just to go with the pops of gold I already have on the page. I decided just to run it vertically down the left side of the page, just for a little sparkle over there, a little bit of interest. I didn't want it, it to run into my um, floral area on the right side. So I think the left side kind of helps frame the photo layers a little bit. And now I'm gluing down all of these ridiculous layers I've been piecing together. <laughs> I'm really happy with how they're looking. I have the washi down, so now I can glue it down. And I think at this point I'm done. So I do end up taking, like, I'm cleaning up right now. I think I'm done with my page. I take my photos, and then I look at my recipe, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I forgot Brad's. <laughs> I was so like, oh, my gosh, you forgot something in your own recipe. I am labeling a little bit um, at the bottom of the page. I'm just saying Pina just so I remember her name later on but yeah I, I go back and I'm like okay you gotta add brads <laughs> and I have these sparkly ones that are pink and green so I'm like okay we're using all the pink and green ones I have six pink and six green so I figured I could do little clusters of three going around my photos so that's what I decided to do I'm just using this cute little Amy Tangerine piercing set that Ronnie sent me. I use it all the time. I love it so much. And then I'm just doing my little uh, poking holes so that I can push those brads through. 
And then once all the brads are through, I'm just going to cover the backs in washi so that it kind of protects the other pages in my album. But um, that's just my little tip for that to make sure you don't poke holes in the page that's on the back side of this one. But I think that looks really cute. I usually like to use brads how I do enamel dots and just do the little scatter look. But this technique is something I learned from my mom. We really like, like to do embellishment like this where it's kind of a little detail in a row and I really like how that looks on this page so you can see I'm just doing three brads in a row in four different areas I'm just making sure the greens are opposite and the pinks are opposite but I think that's like the perfect finishing touch I love that it's in the color scheme and I'm glad I remembered and went back and did it so I'm just getting I think this is my final set I'm getting pushed through right now <clears throat> Then you'll kind of see how the back looks. So I'm just opening all the brads and then I'll cover it all in washi. But then I think I'm done. So this was a lot of fun. Um, I loved this recipe, but I'm slightly biased because I picked it. But I hope everyone else had fun with this recipe too. If you want to try this recipe, just make sure you share your layout on Instagram and tag us, hashtag scrap5 so we can see. Um, make sure you check out what everyone else did with this recipe. They'll be linked in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.